I want to welcome you to the third episode of Bowhunting Whitetails with Bill Winkie. Last week I talked about the 2021 season and the buck that I killed that season and the events of the hunt itself. And this week I want to come back and talk a little bit, a little bit more about the lessons that I learned and especially the ones that pertain to hunting in and around bedding areas. Uh, I was surprised by the behavior that I encountered in those bedding areas because I spent so much time there. You know, not only did I hunt there during the day, uh, but I also, in, in a lot of cases, slept there during the night. So just the coming and going, the things that I learned getting in and out, and then I also learned a lot about how the deer actually, you know, interact and behave in those bedding areas. So let's jump right into it. The first thing that really surprised me was uh, how relaxed and, and uh, uh, docile, how mellow the deer are once they bed. And you'll see them on their feet when they're getting ready to bed and they check everything out. They're really careful. They might be on their feet for a whole hour back in the bedding area, just maybe browsing around, checking things out, and then they'll bed down. Well, once they bed down, it seems as if then their caution level just drops way down. It's almost as if they've said, well, I've checked it all out. It's all good. I don't have to worry anymore. Uh, time for me to, you know, scale back. Uh, and and uh, that really was obvious to me when I was sneaking into those areas. You know, I'd, I would uh, go really slow. I would glass ahead with the binoculars and I would try to see any deer that might be bedded up on the ridge above me as I was sneaking up. And a lot of times I would find them, you know, even in the open, bucks bedded, you know, maybe in a typical spot, you know, like right next to a tree or along a, a, a downed, you know, a deadfall. And uh, as long as they weren't looking in my direction, I could just keep sneaking along and they never picked up on the fact that I was there. Uh, they could be as close as 75 yards away in the wide open. And as long as I was just cautious, careful, moving slow, not making any noise, uh, they never picked up on me. And, and a lot of times I would get in, I would hang my tree stand, and then I would be hunting, you know, just sitting in my stand and, and a deer would pop up out of a deadfall 40 yards away, shake itself off, and then just go off about its business as if it, you know, it had no idea I was there. So as long as you were really quiet and, and move slow and careful, you have to give yourself almost an extra hour uh, to do it that way on your entry into those spots, especially if you're going to hang a stand. Give yourself plenty of time so you can go really slow and really quiet. Multiple times I hung my tree stands with deer, you know, within sight. Uh, I, I, I could see them bedded just over the, you know, the rise or whatever. I could put the stand up and the deer would be 40 or 50 yards away. And as long as, again, like I said, I was quiet about it, uh, they never paid any attention. They couldn't be looking directly at me. But if they were looking at an angle, uh, I don't know, like I said, it's, it's really weird. Uh, I saw a couple of them that were actually sleeping, you know, bucks all stretched out on the ground with their heads down and uh, it was pretty cool. But uh, anyway, the point is, uh, now I feel like as long as the conditions are right, you can sneak in and out of those bedding areas a lot easier than I thought you could. You know, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're not as wary as what I expected. So that kind of opens up more thought processes for the types of places that I can hunt and how I have to go about hunting them. The key to that, and another thing that I learned that was super important, is it has to be a little bit windy. Uh, you're not gonna pull that off if it's still. So you don't try that, you don't go into these bedding areas, even in the morning, even in the dark in the morning. If it's dead calm, they're gonna hear you coming. Uh, so you wanna make sure that there's some wind. You know, I always figured, you know, five plus miles per hour was enough, but ideally, you know, 10 to 15 miles an hour was the perfect wind. Uh, those are good winds because it moves the leaves, rattles the leaves in the trees. Um, it moves enough branches and saplings around so that, you know, even as you're sneaking in, those, that movement and that sound camouflages the sound and the movement that you're making. So that's a really important key that came out of the season. I didn't try to do it when it was still. In fact, that was one of the reasons why I felt like I had to sleep up on the ridge was because so often right at the end of legal shooting time, the wind just dies right down and there's no way you're getting out of there without everything known. You know, the, the sound just carries so well in that bluff country, especially when it's still like that. So a little wind makes a big difference. The other thing, the second lesson, and then I'll, I'll uh, move on, 
But uh, the second lesson from the bedding areas was the fact that the deer were in there uh, a lot sooner than what I thought they would be. So if you go through their daily pattern, at least what I saw, you know, they're, they're, they bed during the day, of course, we know that, but uh, they'll mill around quite a bit during the afternoons. It's not like they're only bedded and then they're only moving to, to feed. They're up, they're moving around, they're browsing a little bit, especially the bucks during the rut. I mean, they're moving and looking for does. Uh, so there's a lot going on there. It's worth hunting the bedding areas in the afternoons, especially during the rut. But what was really interesting to me was an hour before the end of legal shooting time, it was like a ghost town. I mean, those deer just vacated. Everything moved towards food. Uh, I mean, it was literally like you flipped a switch. You know, when that hour before the end of legal shooting time came, they were all moving out. Now, I'm not saying that they got to their feeding areas right away, but they were moving toward them and they were vacating the places where they bed. So it was super easy for me to climb down at the end of legal shooting time and get into my camp setup without any deer knowing about it. Uh, but just did it quick and uh, boy, I never once had a single deer in all of those evenings catch me climbing down from the tree and getting into my, into my camp. Um, but the other thing that was really cool was, or, or at least uh, interesting, was the fact that I thought the deer would stay near their feeding areas until like say the crack of dawn, you know, the first light, they're gonna start working their way back towards the bedding areas, but that's not the case. I'm not sure when they started coming back, but it was during the middle of the night sometime because I would wake up at say two, three in the morning and I could hear them crunching around. Sometimes a little bit of chasing, but I think it was just mostly the does, maybe some bucks, you know, that had worked their way back into those areas. Uh, so that tells me that you're just not gonna beat them to the bedding areas in the mornings. Like you think, well, I'm gonna, sneak in there ahead of the deer, you know, because the deer are gonna be around their feeding areas. And, you know, as long as I go really quick, you know, and, and uh, I'll get there before them. Well, they're already there, you know, a certain percentage of them. I don't know how many, you know, what percentage, but there's a lot of deer already in the bedding areas before first light. Uh, so, you know, that, that again, changes my whole thought process on how do I hunt these, because you're not gonna sneak in ahead of them. So that means that you have to have something uh, on your side, which again is the wind. You know, even in the mornings, early in the mornings, when you think you're going in before them, you're not. And you've got to have enough wind to cover the sound that you make. Uh, so my, my philosophy on, on accessing bedding areas, I think, is still a good one. I always waited until gray light, until I could see the ground. So that way I could see any branches, any twigs, you know, any you know, spots where there was a pile of leaves or whatever. Then I could move quick. And I felt like I could move quieter and I could move quicker. Well, since I'm not beating them into the bedding areas anyway, that seems to make an awful lot of sense to me now. Uh, you know, wait until gray light and, and get in there as quickly and as quietly as you can. If you're starting to get the day noises by then, maybe a little bit of day breeze, you know, winds coming up a little bit, you know, because now the, the, the day is, you know, the, the forecasted wind starts to kick in. You got a few squirrels crunching around, you know, maybe a few turkeys have flown down off the roost. The woods are starting to come to life. And those little bit of sounds that you might make moving quickly through there aren't as big of a deal as when it's dead still and you're crunch, crunch, crunching, you know, with a very threatening sound uh, coming into those bedding areas. So that wraps up uh, the key points from the 2021 season. There's a lot of stuff I want to talk about. I want to talk about, you know, deer behavior, uh, you know, hunting strategies, a bunch of stuff that, that, you know, we can apply to this coming season. But I'm also going to take you back to the farm and, uh, you know, go over some of the projects I've got to do there. I know people really enjoy that habitat stuff and, and uh, you know, I'm gonna dive into that still, but it's not gonna be the key feature of this series. Uh, this is bow hunting whitetails. So we're gonna be more about the hunting part and, and maybe scale back a little bit on the land management and the, you know, the deer management uh, aspect of it. I also had a question that I'm gonna answer real quick on YouTube from one of the, the uh, viewers regarding where I put my tree stands on those ridges and why I chose those spots. So I'll hit that really quick now, and then I'm gonna roll out of this episode. So if you look at the ridge country, uh, the deer typically have a trail about 30 yards down from the top on each side, and they'll use the one on the downwind side. So let's say it's an east-west ridge, wind is coming from the north, they're gonna be on the south side of the ridge you know, hitting a trail 20 to 30 yards down, maybe a little bit further down, but they really favor the downwind side of the ridgetop. And 
that creates an opportunity for you knowing that you know it's going to be a north wind i'm going to come in from the south i'm not going to go all the way to the top i'm going to stop below that trail and that's where, where i'm going to hunt well ideally you can get yourself high enough in the tree so that your body is above the top of the ridge line and if the uh, woods are fairly open so there's not a lot of foliage on the on the trees the wind blows through pretty clean and that's going to carry your scent above anything that's close by on the downwind side so you kind of get away with not only uh, being downwind of the deer above you but above and keeping your scent above the deer that are on the hillside as it falls away below you uh, but you got to be high enough in the tree like i said or the tree that you're in has to be high enough that you are physically your body is above the top of the ridge line that way you get a clean flow of wind coming through and it only works really well when there's not a lot of foliage on the trees you know in in uh, october there's so much leaves and foliage on the ground that the wind still swirls anytime there's dead airspace the wind swirls into it so if it can blow clean through it's going to take your scent clean through but if it's more like dead air then you're going to get a lot more swirling so kind of keep that in mind those that was the pattern that i was hunting when the wind was out of the north i was on the south side of that ridge when the wind was out of the south i was on the north side of the ridge so i had two stands that i hunted depending on wind direction you know any kind of variation of south southwest southeast pretty much worked on the north side of the ridge and you know vice versa you know when the wind was a, a variations of north i would be on the south side so anyway that wraps up the 2021 season uh i'm not going to talk about it a whole lot more uh it was a lot of fun and uh hopefully you enjoyed uh, my story of, of how it all came together and some of the things that I learned. Well, I appreciate you joining me this week. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember to always dream big.